In this video, I'm gonna show you how to ceramic coat your bike. We did a video recently on ceramic coatings and how they work. There was a lot of interest in it and a lot of questions. So I'm gonna show you in this video exactly how you can do it to your bike at home so that your bike becomes more hydrophobic, more dirt repellent, so that it stays cleaner for longer and is easier to clean. But before we go any further, I need to clear something up. And that's on the last video. There are a lot of people commenting going, you don't need ceramic coat your bike. Just wax your bike. Waxing does the same thing. Well, you can wax your bike if you want to, but they are different. Wax forms a hydrophobic layer on the bike, but it's a sacrificial layer. It's not chemically bonded to the surface and it won't last very long and it will wash off. Uh, using a ceramic coat, what that does is chemically bond to the surface, meaning that this hydrophobic layer will last much longer. It will last a year, maybe even longer, if you look after it and maintain it properly. The first and most important step is to make sure your bike is properly prepped and is thoroughly clean. So give it a really good wash before you do this. It's also one of the reasons why if you've got a brand new bike, it's great to just ceramic coat it immediately out of the box because you don't need to clean it and there's minimal prep required. This is Alex's bike, it's not brand new, but he has given it a really good clean. Now, in terms of what you can actually ceramic coat, well, there are a lot of questions on this as well. So any lacquered surface, can be ceramic coated because the ceramic coating bonds chemically uh, to the lacquer. So you're looking at carbon frames, usually all lacquered, all the other bits like the handlebars um, are lacquered too. The carbon wheels um, are lacquered so we can ceramic coat those which helps keep them cleaner. Just be aware that it's, while that's fine on a disc brake bike, if you're using a rim brake bike, you don't want to ceramic coat the braking surface. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, other things such as the chain set and derailleurs, these Shimano ones, they're made of alloy, but they are painted and lacquered so you can apply a ceramic coat to them. Just be aware that it's pointless doing it on the contact surfaces such as the teeth um, and things like the cassette because there's gonna be mechanical abrasion on those. That's why the paint actually rubs off on the teeth of your chain set and a ceramic coat isn't gonna do anything there. It's not gonna stick on either. So, but these, these bigger areas of the chain set and the cranks, yeah, you can help keep those cleaner. So that's worth doing. The underside of the saddle, most plastic components um, feature a, a lacquer on them as well as part of the finishing prep of plastic components. So you can do it to plastic stuff too. Uh, in terms of metal frames, alloy frames, Sometimes they are lacquered as a surface finish, in which case, yes, you could ceramic coat them, but some aluminium frames and titanium frames have a bare finish or they're anodized, um, in which case a ceramic coat is not gonna stick to those. So yeah, you can't, you can't ceramic coat those. So with the, the clean bike, what we're then going to do is just remove a bunch of the components to give us greater access to all the nooks and crannies so that we can properly apply the ceramic coat. So I'm gonna remove the chain set, the wheels, and probably just disconnect uh, the brakes as well so I can get better access down here. And that should give me sufficient access. I'll remove the bottle cages too. With the frame stripped down, we then need to just surface prep it before we put the coat on. And the way you do that is you take isopropyl alcohol and a clean, fresh microfiber, and you simply apply the isopropyl alcohol or IPA to the microfiber. And then you, just like Mr. Miyagi, wipe on and then wipe off. And this is really important to do because you're removing surface contamination from the frame, which will either get trapped under the ceramic coat or it will inhibit and stop good adhesion of the ceramic coat to the surface. Something to be aware of is if you're planning to stick anything to the bike uh, after applying a ceramic coat. So for example, some power meters like the Shimano power meters have a little frame magnet that sticks to the frame. Oh, you might just want to stick a name sticker on, on your frame. With a ceramic coat on, that's going to be really difficult to do. I've been there, I've fully ceramic coated a new frame and then gone to fit a Shimano power meter. Couldn't get the magnet to stick or my frame sticker won't stick to the top tube. And that's because the ceramic coat is so effective. Now, if that is the case, either 
have your sticker on there and just ceramic coat over the over the sticker with the sticker already in place or if there's places where you think you're going to be sticking things leave don't ceramic coat those spots leave areas where you can stick something if that's something that you're going to need to be able to do in the future so now we're ready to start applying the ceramic coat. It usually comes in little tiny bottles like this because you only need a tiny amount of it. Now for a road bike, I can get two road bikes out of a little bottle like this. Uh, but if it's your first time, you might use a bit more of it. And if you're using like a TT bike and you want to coat the disc wheel and stuff, probably one bottle is what you'll get. TT bikes have a lot more surface area, um, I find as well. And I'm using the the G-Technic ceramic coat here, but this video is not sponsored by them. There are other brands out there making ceramic coats now, but this is one that, that I've used and well, I'm happy to recommend it. So what you do is you need to prime a little applicator pad such as this. Um, you can buy these on the internet um, <laughs> and from like cosmetic stores. It is like a cosmetic applicator pad. Uh, or if you buy a lot of ceramic uh, kits they come with applicator pads so what we're going to do is prime the pad by getting a load of drops of the ceramic coat serum on there so we really want to get the pad and I'm just using the end of the pad where my fingertips are and getting a load of it on there so it's really like it's really wetted you can see there I'm then going to work my way over the entire bike just pushing the ceramic coat on, working my way over just one area at a time and also taking note of the areas that I've covered before moving on to the next one. So you just wanna evenly spread the ceramic coat around. I'm just gonna do the, the top tube here first. You can see it going on here. It's just making the surface look a little bit wet. You can see the difference there. Now what we're looking to do is to just spread this around so that it's even and there aren't big clumpy bubbly spots. Once you've applied the ceramic coat to an area, you want to leave it for one to two minutes and then you're gonna take a fresh clean microfiber cloth and then simply just wipe that surface down. And what that's gonna do is remove the excess but it's gonna leave a really, really, really thin layer of the ceramic coat bonded to the surface. I'm now just gonna repeat this process around the entire bike, um, so we could probably speed up, and have some kind of montage. Something else to be aware of though, because this is a question that's come up, is is this compatible with matte frames? Well, this frame's a great example because it actually has a mixture of gloss and matte finishes on it. It is compatible with matte finishes, but what it does is, is it just makes them a little bit less matte. It does gloss them up slightly, but they're still distinctly matte. So you will see that once I've applied this and wiped it off, you'll still be able to see that this is a, a matte surface. That's, bit, that's ceramic coated, that bit isn't. And you can see it's just a very slight difference, but not there's not much in it. I've now ceramic coated and wiped down the entire frame. Also did the chain set and I've done the derailleurs as well and the brakes. I've not done the wheel rims because this is a rim brake bike and so I'm not going to advise you ceramic coat wheel brake rims if it's rim brake because you can interfere with the braking surface. Um, you can do the hubs though and hubs are quite a useful thing to ceramic coat because they're quite an awkward area of the bike to clean. Now, with this coat on there, what you then do is leave this 24 hours uh, to sort of, well, dry and cure. Um, but then following that 24 hours, you, you could take your bike out and ride it, but you can't jet wash it or wash it uh, for a further seven days is the advice on this particular ceramic coat. And that's because there's a cross-linking reaction going on. So the ceramic coat is made of siloxanes and what they're doing is uh, well, performing a silanization reaction where they sort of all cross-link together and that strengthens and hardens the ceramic coat over the entire surface. So that curing process is really important. So yeah, as I said, leave it 24 hours to do the initial cure and then don't wash the bike for seven days after that first cure. 
So uh, factor that in if, you, if you're planning to coat your bike. Another question that people asked was, how much weight does it add? Well, I mean, a little bottle like this, I mean, I've not even used, I've used like half of it, if that. I mean, what's that gonna be like? Three grams or something? It's like not gonna register on most, on most scales. And once your ceramic coat is on and it's cured, I find it's really effective because what it allows you to do is more effective non-contact washing. So contact washing is where you get like a sponge or a wash mitt and you're actually physically touching the surface. And if you do this, it's going to cause little swirls and marks in your paint. Like I can actually see Alex has done this. There are some little, the light is showing up little cuts in the lacquer and swirls in the paint there. And by having the ceramic coat on, you can get rid of a lot of dirt in a non-contact wash by jet washing or hosing down uh, the bike. Obviously, you don't directly jet wash your bearings. And then once you've removed that initial dirt with a pre-wash, non-contact wash, then you can do a contact wash. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just gonna make the process of your bike uh, cleaning just that, that bit more effective and that bit easier to do. And so, yeah, I'm a fan. So I hope you found this video useful and it's answered your questions on ceramic coatings and shown you that it's easy to do at home. If you've got any other questions, just let us know in the comments. And, you know, well, if, you, if you'd like to see more stuff like this, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And as I mentioned, this coat will last if it's looked after, you know, a year and longer if, if it's properly looked after and cared for. One of the key things is, you know, not getting solvents, harsh solvents on it. So certain disc brake cleaners, for example, they, they can take it off. So if you're gonna wash your disc brakes, don't just start spraying disc brake remover all over the place where you're gonna get um, some of that spray then going on to ceramic coat parts to frame. Just make sure you just take your wheels out, wipe the discs down um, and do it that way. But yeah, just to be aware of that, some harsh solvents can take it off, but otherwise should be good to go.